Well, Hanuman. How long should we speak about Hanuman? How many days? I was thinking about the topic and thinking, no way can I cover the topic in one evening. So I'm not going to cover the whole topic in one evening, but just some points. And hopefully the some points will encourage all of you to read Ramayana every day, at least between now and Ramnomi, coming up very soon next week. And if that much can be accomplished from this visit to Austin, I'll be very happy. Every day. A little bit. I met with somebody that's quite old today. I won't mention the name. They're from Austin. And from the time they were very little, every day, Grandma would read to them from Ramayana. Every day, Grandma would read Ramayana. It was like, you know, Brushing your teeth. You don't not brush your teeth. Do you brush your teeth every day? Of course you brush your teeth every day. Everybody brushes their teeth every day. And does everyone read Ramayana every day? Not necessarily. But we heard twice already the benefit of hearing Ramayana every day is all kinds of spiritual benefit comes. This halastuti of Narada Muni describing to Valmiki, compose this literature, it'll be, it'll be flawless and this and that. And one who hears every day, their whole life will become enriched. You know, Vedic culture, in part, is preserved by regularly hearing transcendental topics. Of course, we like Shuman Bhagavatam. At the same time, on the same, on the same standard of eternality is the message of Ramachandra. We've been hearing that. And their benefits are also like that. So we're not going to completely cover the Hanuman topic, but I have a few interesting points to start with. How many of you have seen images like this where Hanuman is opening up his chest, and what do you see inside? You see Sita and Ram. Isn't it very common? So do you know where it comes from? Where, did, where does it come from? Which scripture? What's the Shastra Paman for that one? Here's another image, one of many such images. Hanuman opening his chest and showing inside. Sita Ram. What's the Shastra Paman for that? Huh? Tulsi Ramayana? I invite you, maybe even challenge you, please show me in Tulsi Ramayana, Ramchari Tamanas, where it says that. Because uh, I've asked this question of very knowledgeable devotees, and I draw a blank. Although, how common is it to see this and so many others? They're very common. Well, the closest thing I came to it was indicated here in this previous slide. Kritivasi Ramayana. Kritivasi Ramayana is one of the, in the long list of different Ramayanas that uh, he, it's poetic. And in Kritivasi Ramayana, this is a seen from that Ramayana where Ramachandra turns to Sita there in Ayodhya, seated on the royal throne, and there's Lakshman and Bharata and Shatrugna. And Ram turns to Sita and says, you have this very precious necklace. I would like you to consider who is the most, most worthy person to receive your mercy? And he, you know, there's a lengthy description of her quality and, and the, the person who should receive the necklace. 
And Sita is just looking at Hanuman. Sita is looking at Hanuman and Sita is looking at Hanuman. And she turns to Hanuman and decorates Hanuman with her very precious necklace. And the Kritivasa Ramayana goes on to say, Hanuman looks at the necklace and he starts eating the necklace. And Lakman says, Hanuman, what are you doing? And Hanuman says, this necklace is useless. It doesn't have the name of Ram on the necklace, on the beads of the necklace. And then there's some further discussion. And so if the necklace doesn't have the name of Ram, then why don't you destroy your body? And Hanuman opens up his body and shows that in every bone of his body is inscribed Ram's name, Kritivasa Ramayana. So it doesn't show Sita Ram within his heart, but with every bone of, his, of Hanuman's body, Ram's name is inscribed. That's how deep is the love of Hanuman for Ram. There's another nice pastime that I heard a nice description from Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj. How many of you have seen in India where there's a Hanuman temple, Hanuman is painted all red like this? You see? So where does that come from? Here's from Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj. One time, there's no scriptural authority, but this is one of those common stories. One time Hanuman asked, why does Sita wear a red dot in her forehead? And the very simple answer was, she likes it. And so Hanuman scurried away. He found some red kunkum powder and he smeared his whole body in red kunkum powder because Sita likes it. And so he is depicted many places like this red Hanuman. And you know, his club isn't all reddish too, but everything else, his crown isn't reddish, but he's completely covered in red because his life is to please Ram and, and pleasing Ram means to please Sita. That's Hanuman. One of the things we know about Hanuman is his power is crossing the sea to find Sita, and his ability to perform amazing accomplishments. Here's a detail that you may not know, but it's nice to hear some details that you don't know. So here's one of them. From Chaitanya Charitamrita, Matalila 9, text 11, you can look it up later. There, Prabhupada makes reference to a passage from Adhyatma Ramayana, another one of the Ramayanas other than Valmiki Ramayana, where he describes deities of Sita and Ram called Mula. Sita Ram deities, because when Ikshvaku descended to Ayodhya, how did it happen? How did Ikshvaku or the Surya dynasty come to earth through Ikshvaku? Because we know from Bhagavad Gita, we covered this yesterday, but here we go again. Chapter 4 Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Long, long ago, I spoke this imperishable science to the sun god, Vivaswan, right? And Vivaswan in turn instructed it to Manu. Manu. That means that the Manu who's the son of Vivaswan is Vivaswata Manu. That's our Manu. Manu number seven. 
So Manu, in turn, instructed this imperishable science to Iksvaku. Iksvaku is the son of Manu. Manu, it turns out, he arranged from, for Vishvakarma to create a replica of Ayodhya in the spiritual world, here in the material world. We gave it the same name, Ayodhya. So he sent Iksvaku to Ayodhya to establish the Surya dynasty. And along with, listen, along with Iksvaku came a deity of Sita Ram. They hadn't appeared yet. They're in the line of Iksvaku. But worshipful deities of Sita and Ram were given to Iksvaku. And then the son of Ikvaku received the deities to worship, and they were passed on, passed on, and passed on, including Dasarath, worshipped before Ram and Sita Ram was born. He worshipped Sita Ram deities. And Ram received them, and he worshipped Sita Ram deities. And according to Adhyatma Ramayana, during the rule of Ramachandra, you'll find this in this reference in Chaitanya Charitamrita, there was a Brahmana who had a vow that until he saw Ram that day, he would fast. He made offerings, but he wouldn't eat unless he saw Ramachandra. Some had personal responsibilities outside of Ayodhya. And so until he returned, he would pass. Some days he would go on for days at a time. No, not even a drop of water or a little grain of rice. He, he wouldn't eat until he saw Ram. Then he would break his fast. So this got to, became to Ram's attention. One time, according to this passage from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Ram was gone for seven, nine days. The Brahman didn't eat or drink anything for nine days. And then when Ram returned, he broke his fast. So Ram didn't want this Brahman to undergo such hardship. And so Ramachandra gave these Mula Sita Ram deities to the Brahmana. So they wouldn't have to fast. He worshipped them for the rest of his life. And towards the end of his life, he gave the deity of Sita Ram to Hanuman. Hanuman was very happy. And according to this Adhyatma Ramayana, when he departed from Ganda Madana mountain, he then gave the deity to Bhima. You know who is Bhima, right? One of the Pandavas. And Bhima is also the son of Vayu, just as Hanuman is the son of Vayu. And Bhima worshipped them, and Bhima worshipped them, and they were passed on to many kings in the descendancy of the Pandava dynasty. Eventually, the deities were given to a, a risen king named Shemakanta. And the Arisan kings, they, in their royal palace, they worship Sita, these very same Sitaram deities. Eventually, they came in the care of the Gajapati kings in Orissa. And one who was from that same kingdom, I'll say it slowly, was a disciple of Madhvacharya disciple of Madhvacharya, who was an Arisan Gajapati king. His name was Narahari Tirtha. There were two principal disciples, amongst the many disciples of Madhvacharya, that are in our disciplic line. Padmanabha, Tirtha, and Narahari Tirtha. 
You'll find them in our disciplic succession list. Disciples of Madhvacharya. Lakshmi Pati Tirtha was a disciple of them, who was then the, 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 in, in the line of spiritual masters for Ishwara Puri, etc. Madhavendra Puri, Ishwara Puri. A very important person. So, Madhvacharya, in the course of his travels, he met two learned persons. He convinced them to, uh, to become Vaishnavas. They wanted to become sannyasis. He said, no, you stay in your royal position and rule from the, and become, you know, rule the citizens from that position of being a pure devotee. So that's what Narahari Tirtha did. He was a king, but a very equitable person. And in course of time, by his position as being a king, he gave the deities, the Sitaram deities, to Madhvacharya, according to this Chaitanya Charitamrita purport, three months before he departed from this world. Narahari Tirtha, his disciple, gave these deities to Madhvacharya. Madhvacharya installed the deities of Sitaram in his main temple in Udupi. There's nine temples and one main temple, Udupi Krishna temple. There today, there are these deities of, the original deities came from Iksvaku. And here's a nice photograph of the deities. Now there's Hanuman by the side of Sita and Ram. And over by the side of Ram, there's Lakshman. But the original deity is just Sita Ram deities. So that's an interesting detail. Hanuman worshipped these deities for a long time. And now back to Hanuman. <clears throat> We're going to hear some history that you all know, but it's nice to hear Ramayana again and 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 again. So we're going to hear it again. There was a period of time when the demigods were harassed by you know who. Who were they harassed by? Huh? Ravana. And so <clears throat> the demigods went to the shore of the milk ocean. We're going to see another image. And they offered prayers to the Supreme Lord Vishnu. Help! Ravana. He is a scourge of the universe. Even in the heavenly realm, he won't leave us alone. Help! So he agreed to come. But he agreed to come through Lord Brahma, and he instructed Lord Brahma to have the demigods assist him in his pastimes of dealing with the Rakshasa dynasty by creating offspring in categories of living beings that Ravana didn't have a benediction that he could be killed by. So many of them took birth as Vanaras. Vanara is a nice Sanskrit word. If you don't know Sanskrit, it's okay. I don't either. But Vanara has to do with, a, 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 they're human-like, but they're more like monkeys than humans. So there's Brahma receiving the reply along with the demigods from Lord Vishnu. And so the demigods got this message from Brahma, this is what the Lord wants. You create offspring. So Vayu took that charge seriously and Vayu created an offspring through this apsara named Punji Kastal. Punji Stala, Punji Kastala, Punji Kastala. Now, who is Punji Kastala? You might want to know. See, she is 
That was it? Okay. Apsaras are kind of quasi, they're not exactly demigods, but they're just below the demigods. They're very skilled dancers and singers. She was a lovely Apsara. However, um, she had made an attempt to agitate a rishi. So, detecting that she was attempting to agitate a rishi, she was the maid servant of Rahaspati, she was cursed to take birth on earth as the daughter of a monkey king. The monkey king's name was Kunjara. So she, the Apsara, took birth as the daughter of a monkey king, Kunjara. And however, she, when she took birth, she had powers like an Apsara. She could change shapes and she could appear however she wanted to appear. So she appeared as the wife of Kunjara. And in course of time, there was a um, Keshari, one of the noble monkey chiefs, had a wife who was named Anjana, who in Anjana was the daughter of Kunjara. So over after some time, Bayu created a child by blowing, by trans just by the, the touch of the wind within the body of Anjana. And so she now has a small child. Anjana became, the son became Anjaneya, the son of Anjana and Keshari. So sometimes he, Hanuman, is known as Anjana Sutta, or sometimes he's known as Anjaneya, but it's the same name, the same person. And he grew up in this way. The son of Vayu and the, the son of Anjana. And he lived in quite an ordinary way in some senses, but he had powers as the as was instructed by Lord Vishnu, the, child, the children that you create could have powers like you. Not ordinary, but, you know, but like you have powers, O demigods, the children, the offspring should have powers like you. And so he grew up with incredible powers. Now, one of his tendencies was he could travel in the wind, like Vayu can travel in the wind. So one day, young Hanuman saw he was hungry. Children are sometimes hungry. This little boy wants an apple. And he saw what it looked like a fruit in the sky. So he wanted to eat a fruit, but it was the sun in the sky. And so he went zooming like the wind towards the fruit in the sky. And as he got closer and closer to the sun, his father, Vayu, was concerned he might get scorched by the heat of the sun. So his father, we'll see some painting shortly, his father was following closely behind him. And as he was heading towards the sun, there was a little bit of concern from some of the demigods. And they went to Indra and saying, what's this monkey up to? He's going to cause a problem for the universe. And so you better do something. Oh, Indra. So what did Indra do? What did Indra do? You don't know. He threw one of his thunderbolts. Here's some paintings of Hanuman going after the sun. Here's another very nice one. The sun's got a nice smile. So he was attacked by Indra's thunderbolt. And that wasn't very nice, because when he was hit by Indra's thunderbolt, thunderbolt hit him in his chin. 
And when you see in the sky, there's demigods saying, Indra, do something. So he did something. He hit him with a thunderbolt. And when he, the thunderbolt hit Hanuman, who was zooming through the sky, he fell back to earth. Here's a painting showing some of these details. In the center, there's Indra, and there's Hanuman heading towards the far left, heading towards the sun, right behind him, riding on the back of, not exactly sure what it is, but it's um, some kind of a, a creature. He's, uh, that's, that's, that's Varuna, not Varuna. It's Vayu. Deer. He's yeah, riding on the back of a deer. That's what the text says. And over on the left, excuse me, over on the right, there's Rahu. There's just a head floating in the, in the space. And he was one of the ones that um, the disembodied head is pleading with Indra, please stop Anuman. So he did. And when he hit him with the thunderbolt, he fell back to earth. And the center is meant to show a mountain. And when he came in for a crash landing, he fell on the mountain. There's another painting showing Indra with his thunderbolt and Hanuman being hit by the thunderbolt, etc., etc., etc. So Vayu saw all this happen. And when Vayu saw this happen, he was very concerned with his son. So what did Vayu do? Yeah, no oxygen. The movement of air in the whole universe got choked up. Not just oxygen. The flow of air in the whole universe stopped. That's serious stuff. And not only the persons on Earth, but every living entity in the universe, including the demigods, they became choked up. So the demigods went to Lord Brahma, help, what should we do, what should we do? Brahma said, let us go to where Hanuman fell to Earth on, in the mountain or in this mountain cave. Let us give our blessings to him, revive him. So when the demigods did all of that, Vayu became relieved. The text at the bottom, Vayu restored the vital breath of all living things, and he requested, Vayu requested, that the demigods each give benedictions to Hanuman. And so they each of the demigods, having this power and that power and the, that power, they gave benedictions to Hanuman, which was really nice. I mean, Indra made a mess, but Indra did what the demigods were asking him to do, so they took responsibility for the mess. They gave benedictions. Now, Hanuman's a little boy. And little boys are playful, right? Not you, but sometimes little boys are playful. And when he was play playful, he became very naughty and he knew nothing could stop him. So he would go to where the sages were doing their yagya and he would disrupt the yagya. The bottom left, he's there, he's pulling a sage's beard. And there's a water, a, a sage that's offering ablations and he would drink the ablations water. And, he would do naughty, naughty things. So one of the sages said, we have to stop this naughty Hanuman. So they uttered a curse. Those who gave the blessings uttered a curse. And what was the curse? The curse was that he would forget all of his powers so he'd just be a normal little monkey anymore. And until that time came when somebody reminded him of what his powers were, he would just be like a normal monkey again. Now there isn't a detailed description of how Hanuman got his education. 
but you know he's in a vanara form but he's has the capacity of a demigod like Vayu. So it doesn't say exactly where, but the circumstance doesn't describe it just before he made his leap to Lanka, it was confirmed that he had been trained by God. The Sun God was his guru. He trained him in Sanskrit, he trained him in speech, he trained him in the scriptures. He trained him thoroughly somehow. Doesn't give the detail, but it's confirmed. Here's a little description from Uttarakhanda. That's this final section of Valmiki Ramayana. Long ago, this foremost of monkeys, immeasurable and eager to learn grammar, faced the sun and, following it, walked from the eastern to the western mountain and so mastered that great subject. So, as a little boy, he is a Sanskrit scholar taught by the sun god himself so he had eloquence he had command of sanskrit and later ramachandra is going to comment this monkey really has skills he, because he had that from the sun god we don't hear about him till much later much later is where Kabanda, who's Kabanda? Any of our young people know who's Kabanda? Who's Kabanda? He's what? He's a demon, yeah. What, what are some of the characteristics of Kabanda? His head was pushed in. An eye in his stomach. Look at this guy. And he had, how long were his arms? Miles long. And he was always hungry. So when he saw Ram and Lakshman passing through the forest, his long arms grabbed them and started pulling them to his mouth. And his mouth was gigantic. And Ram said to Lakshman, get your sword, let's chop off this guy's arms. And as they're chopping, chopping, he then revealed who he was. He was this person who had this misshapen form because of the circumstance. And they wanted to know from him, where can we find Sugriva? No, excuse me, how, how can we find Sita? You can find Sita if you get help from Sugriva. A person in distress like you two, need a friend, and your Sugriva is also in distress like you too. Find Sugriva. Where do we find Sugriva? Chop off my, my, my arms, put my body in a pit, and bury me alive, right, Kabanda? And I'll then be relieved of this curse, and as I'm ascending, I'll tell you how to find Sugriva. So that's what happened. And he he go that way. Lake Pampa, you'll find him over in that direction. So there they go. And many things happened. But one of the things that happened was they were spotted from on top of Rishimuk Mountain where Sugriva was. And he saw these two ascetic looking persons with weapons, bow and arrow and like soldiers. So he wanted to know, who are they? Friend or foe? Why are they dressed like this? Maybe it's a trick of Vali. Maybe he sent them to kill us. So what to, what to do, what to do, what to do? He turned to Hanuman and said, Hanuman, you're my minister. There's one thing I've learned about children. Mothers know which cry is their child. Because there's only one lady that got up, and it's the mother. Because they recognize the cry. To me, it's just something else. So, Anuman 
You're an expert minister. You know how to change shapes. Take the shape of a Brahmana and go before those two and find out friend or foe. Hanuman's a minister. He climbed down disguised as a Brahmana, came before Ram and Lakshman from on top of Rishimuk Hill. And when he reached there, he was taking the role of a mediator, the mediator between Sugriva and who, you know, whether they were friend or foe. But as soon as he came before them, immediately just being in the presence of Ram, he could understand there's not just friend, this is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So he changed his shape back to Hanuman. And he fell at his feet. He couldn't hide his identity. And he disclosed everything. This is who I am. This is who I'm representing. And I've come to see if you're friend or foe. He desires your friendship. And then hearing all of this, Hanuman's eloquent speech was just astounding. So... Ram spoke to Lakshman, commenting on the quality of his speech. Everything was just impeccable. His exalted qualities, here's what Ram says. He's a mastery in all the Vedas. He did not use even a single unchaste expression. He spoke in chaste Sanskrit. He spoke in a middle tone. His speech was rich in erudition. He's not talking to Hanuman. He's talking to Lakshman about Hanuman. He was delivered without any hurry. He could please the mind even of an enemy with weapons in his hand. He earned the trust of Ram and Lakshman by his quality and character and his straightforwardness and his honesty and simplicity and, and everything and everything. And so Ram started describing his plight and how Kabanda had sent them to meet Sugriva because he, Ram, had also lost his wife. As Sugriva had lost his wife, Kabanda said, join forces, you can help one another. So I came to find Sugriva and to just see this. You're Sugriva's minister. Can you take us to Sugriva? And then Hanuman revealed the, the history of Sugriva, of how he had a problem with Bali, his brother. And, and out of fear of his brother, he left the kingdom and was living on top of this mountain, Rishimuk Mountain. You all know these stories. This is just hearing it again and again and again. And so Hanuman volunteered, if you like, I can take you to meet him directly. And there's different paintings showing the same thing. Here's Hanuman gesturing. It wasn't just a gesture. Let us, let me introduce you to Sugriva, and you can make a bond of friendship with him. So what did Hanuman do? He made himself really big. Really big, and he put the two brothers on his shoulders and climbed up Rishimuk Mountain, like it was a piece of cake. Different paintings. His mood, primarily his mood, the mood of Hanuman is, there's five, we discussed this. You remember the discussion about five primary and second secondary rasas? Were you with us for that discussion? Half of it. Do you remember what the five primary rasas are? Shantarasa, Dashi Rasa, Sakya Rasa, Vatsalya Rasa, and Madhuri Rasa. Right? Five? Which of those five is Hanuman? Dasya Rasa. Dasha means servant. His happiness, his everything, is serving Ram. We can say Lakshman Ram. We can say Sita Ram. But serving Ram, anything in relation to Ram, he's ready to serve. So, with his body becoming very, very big, 
he very quickly ascended the mountain. As you see, there's many paintings of this scene. And Hanuman looked really happy carrying Ram and Lakshman, and Ram looked really happy being carried by Hanuman. So off they go, and they reach the top of Rishimuk Mountain, and he makes the introduction to Sugriva. There's Sugriva on the right. He's with this nice crown on his head. With a crown on his head. And introductions are made to Sugriva. Now, that concludes part one. And we've already gone for a little over an hour. No, about 45 minutes. So I'm going to continue on a little bit. This is the same slide as you just saw. This is the same artist showing they're on top of Rishimuk Mountain. If you can't figure it out, that's Rishimuk Mountain. They're sitting on top of. And there they're meeting with the Vanaras. And introductions are made. The function, along with Dasya, there's a, an Acharya function that Hanuman plays in Ramayana. That is, an establishing of a relationship between the devotee, Sugriva, and the Supreme Lord. That's the Acharya function. And so he makes an arrangement. Now, in between Sugriva and Ram, there's a different relationship between Dasya. Are you with me? The relationship between Sugriva and Ram is what? Friendship, right? There it is, the Sanskrit on the screen. Sakyarasa, friendship. So they take a vow of friendship before a fire. But one of the things that you see in addition to the fire, there's Sugriva. Behind Sugriva is Jambavan the bear. And of course, very close by is Hanuman and the other members, the Vanras behind Jambavan and Sugriva. By the right knee of Ramachandra, there's some ornaments. What are those ornaments? Those ornaments, the ornaments were ornaments that were thrown by Sita as she was being carried by Ravana over the Rishimuk mountain. She threw off the side of the chariot those ornaments. Actually, the chariot was broken, so just she was being carried by him. And she threw down those ornaments in a cloth. And the monkeys received the ornaments. The monkeys came and brought the ornaments to show the ornaments to Ramachandra. Here's another B.G. Sharma painting where it's showing she's still on the chariot. And she's throwing the ornaments off the side of the chariot. And there's... Who's that vulture? Jatayu. Jatayu? Do you know the name Jatayu? No. See the bird? That's Jatayu. Jatayu sacrificed his life to try to protect Sita. So when Ram sees here his the cloth and he's being handed the ornaments of Sita and there he's looking closely at the ornaments of Sita and he shows the ornaments of Sita to Lakshman. Just see, these are Sita's ornaments. And when he sees the ornaments of Sita, he's feeling very sad. So there's a plan that's being made right here. Now the friendship has been formulated. They're, they touched fire and took vows of friendship. And it's confirmed these are Sita's ornaments. So then it's decided that between the two, both Ram is in difficulty 
and Sugriva is in difficulty, Ram would help Sugriva first regain his wife. And then in turn, Sugriva would help Ram regain his wife. That was the friendship pledge to one another. Now, much of what comes up is not so much Hanuman related, but it's rescuing, um, I'm just going to skip a bunch. Which, where should I go? Where should I go next? I, here's where I should go next. After Bali is defeated, you know the story. Who is Bali? You know who is Bali? Sugriva's brother. You know who Sugriva is? We just met him. He's a king. Sugriva is, see with his shoulder against the tree, right next to Ramachandra? That's Sugriva. He's a monkey king. He has an elder brother. His elder brother's name is V-A-L-I, Vali. Vali is a bad guy. Well, not exactly a bad guy, but he became a bad guy. Without all the details. After a battle in which Vali was slain, and the, the wife of Sugriva was given back to Sugriva, it was the four months of the rainy season. It was the four months of the rainy season. So it was agreed that Sugriva, after the rainy season, he would then come to Ram's help and they would find Sita. Yes? We're fast forwarding a whole bunch. And there was a problem. There's always a problem. The problem was that Sugriva became intoxicated with his kingdom and wealth and, you know, comforts and all of that. He forgot completely his pledge. Almost completely. Lakshman came really upset. Tara came to the rescue. He's already remembered his, his pledge to Ram. He sent the Vandras in different directions to gather and come together and so... You know, Cool off, Lakshman. So it, it worked. So now the plan is they're gathered together in the kingdom of now Sugriva's kingdom. And the plan is made to send the Vandras in the four directions. Searching for Sita because they don't know which way she went. So Hanuman is with the group that went in the southerly direction. And when they reached the far shore of the southerly direction, they hadn't found Sita. There are many things that happened in between, but they couldn't find Sita, they couldn't find Sita, they couldn't find Sita. So a decision was made by Angada to fast till death. Because if we go back, we were given 30 days. We go back and tell the king, sorry, we couldn't find Sita. He'll kill us. He's a cruel person. I'd rather die fasting than being killed by Sugriva. Let's just fast till death. So he laid out by the shore of the ocean with the plan to fast till death. And all the other Vanras, well, almost Hanuman didn't go along with that plan, but the other Vanras were also fasting till death. What, would, what happened was, you remember the vulture that you saw the, the painting of? His name was Jatayu. Remember that one? Jatayu had an elder brother. What's the elder brother's name? It starts with an S. Sampati, right? Sampati. So Sampati had his wings burned because one time they were flying and flying and flying and flying towards the sun. They're getting so close to the sun. The elder brother, Sampati, was afraid his younger brother might get scorched by the sun, so he opened his wings and his, his own wings got scorched. And he fell to the ground with no wings. 
So it's a vulture without wings. He got hungry. Now here he is by the shore of the ocean, and there's all these vanders fasting till death. Yummy, that's lunch. So as he got closer, he jumped down the mountainside and was hearing their discussions. And they were talking about Jatayu, his brother. How do they know my brother Jatayu? So he then was a, a talking vulture. He said, what do you know about Jatayu? And they told the whole story. He said, oh, you're looking for Sita. I know where Sita is. Although I can't fly, vultures have good eyesight. She's that away. She's on the other side of the sea. It's only 800 miles away. And now they had to confirm if Jitayu knew what he was talking about. I mean, not his, it's just suspect that he was lying, but, you know, we should verify that Sita is there. And we should confirm, second service, we should confirm with Sita that Ram is going to come and rescue her. Oh, there's an important detail with Hanuman. When the, the, the Vanas were sent in the four directions, Ram called Hanuman. Hanuman, come here. Yes, yes, yes. What is it? Here is my personal ring. Right? The scene. There's many nice painting. He handed, he, Ram, handed to Hanuman, put this in a safe place. When you find Sita, show Sita the ring. Then she'll know you're not, it's not a trick. You're not a disguised enemy. You're my representative. Show her the ring. She'll recognize the ring. And she'll know you're representing me, and her, her confidence will be completely revived. So that's what happened. Now, it's, it's 12 minutes to 8 o'clock, and I think I'm going to end abruptly. There, there's a very nice presentation. When I go to Phoenix... I'm going to make a nice presentation, and maybe I'll let Satyasar know what evening that's going to be. But Hanuman's crossing the ocean. Somewhere in his dhoti, he kept this ring of Ram. <laughs> and he showed the ring of Ram to Sita, and that was that clinched it. Because she was harassed by the Rakshasis and... Ravana and everybody and everybody who to trust in a strange land. But so Hanuman made his way to Lanka. He found Sita and he did what Hanuman likes to do. He, he made himself really small. You know the story? Yeah. You know the story? He made himself some, like a little, little monkey. Not a big Hanuman, but a little, mon little monkey up in a tree. And he started to sing the glories of Ramachandra in eloquent Sanskrit. And Sita is distressed like anything underneath the tree. And she hears this voice singing the glories of Ram, singing the glories of Ram, beautiful melody, beautiful Sanskrit, very sweet messages. Where's that voice? Where's that voice? He continues singing and singing and singing. Doesn't disclose his identity. He's just softening her heart because she's being tortured like anything. And then finally he jumps down from the tree and she's startled. And he discloses his identity. It was sent by Ram. Ram is going to come and redeem you very soon. Here's the ring. I'm representing him. He's powerful. He's coming. Don't worry. Be reassured. If you want to go back to meet him, get on my back and I can carry you. No problem. She said, no thanks. Do you know, remember the reason why she said no to Hanuman? You remember? It's here. 
Yeah, Ram's the one that should bring her back. There was another good reason. A really good reason. When you're soaring through the air, you move so fast, I might fall off. I trust Ram will come. She's fully surrendered to Ram. Ram will come. But here, here's an ornament that I have. You carry this, just as you carried Ram's ring to me. You carry this ornament. Ram will recognize the ornament. He will then know that we met. And soon he'll come. Right? Remember that part? And then there's more to tell, but that's another evening. He didn't go straight back. What did he do? What did Hanuman do next? Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm asking our younger generation people here. Huh? Yeah. I'll show these fellas. They have this beautiful garden. I'll make a mess like anything. Monkey business all over the place. And he took a big iron rod and started whacking everything and knocking things over and all night long making a big noise. And the people heard the big noise. Said, What's going on? So they sent military men and he whacked the military men. And they sent more military men and he whacked all of them. And then Robin is, I, I get him. So they used, in, Indrajit had a special weapon. Remember the special weapon? A certain kind of rope that could tie people up for some period of time. He got tired up and brought it before Ravana. <laughs> and who are you? And Hanuman said, I'm the servant of Ram, and you better give Sita back or you're finished. Da 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 da. You have no idea. You're messing with fire. Your whole kingdom is going to be destroyed. Give Sita back or else. What? You kill him. And then the minister said, No, no, no. It's against Vedic rules. The messenger can't be killed. You can punish him. So he considered what's the good punishment for a monkey. You know the good punishment? Yeah. We, monkeys are very fond of their tail, right? So take some cloth, soak it in oil, put the oil, the oil cloth around his tail and set the cloth on fire. Ouch. But it, it didn't get hot. How, did it, how come it didn't get hot? Who knows? Why his, his tail didn't burn? Blessing of Sita. It was a cool fire. But he took that fire, he broke it, the bonds of the Indrajit rope, and, and put the whole of Lanka on fire before he went back to let Ram know that he found Sita carrying the special ring of Sita. But Ram could know he found Sita. She's okay. But you better hurry. Ravan is a wild man. That was a Hanuman story. Without all the pictures, because it would take too long to do all that. Okay. Any comments or discussion specific to Hanuman, please? Anything at all about Hanuman? You know what our topic tomorrow is? Ravana. Yes. I can't hear you. Hanuman, um, does he fall into like Shiva Tattva or uh, something else? Did he do what? Shiva Tattva. Like uh, no. Vishnu Tattva, Jeev Tattva. He's Jiva. He's a Jiva. He's a Jiva. Yes. Thank you. Krishna. Yes. 
Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj, excellent class. So I heard in one story that Hanuman, um, when he came to Krishna, when he came to where? Um, when he um came to Krishna. Hanuman came to Krishna. Or, Tell me about. Uh, Krishna was, uh, Krishna wanted to bring Hanuman, like, to come somewhere because, I don't know the full story, but I don't he either. <laughs> Sounds like a different yoga to me, what to speak of a different Krishna story. Krishna wanted him to come to, like, come to him because he was like... I have a request. We're going to get together. Are you going to be with us tomorrow evening? Yes, Maharaj. Do a little homework before tomorrow evening, and you find the scriptural reference that you can't remember the full story of. Bring it. Okay, Maharaj. And then read it, and recite it, and then we'll talk about it. Because right now it's kind of like, what? You clear? You clear? Okay. Okay. A recommendation in general, not just for a younger generation, but anyone. When you hear a story, or you heard something, something, do your best to find out what's the scriptural reference behind it. What's the Shastra Praman? Praman means evidence. What's the scriptural evidence to, to, that, from which this story comes? Because otherwise, stories and stories. So that's why I'm asking you, where's this reference? So, it, but going forward in time, you may hear this and that and the other thing, and that's okay. What's the scriptural reference for it? You follow? Great. You have something. Um, so I've also heard the story where, like, Hanuman, um, like there's like a reference about Govardhan in Ramayana. Um, it's like when um, Hanuman and like the Vanaras they're building the bridge to. Lanka. Hanuman did what? Speak slower. Um, when the Vanaras built the bridge to Lanka, um, Hanuman was picking up mountains and like. Hanuman was picking up mountains. Mountains, yeah. Yeah, and like making the bridge. Um. One time he picked up the Govardhan mountain. Really? Yeah, except... Um, where did that come? Where, where's that scriptural reference? I mean, I don't know, but I've read I it don't either. in like... Shubhilaj Prabhu's Ramayana, uh, like... Chronicles of Hanuman, so... Yeah. You have a homework assignment. Find the scriptural reference, not just some storybook or some someone said. Find the scriptural reference. It's not that Hanuman can't do it, but you're asking a very specific question, and I've got a specific question about your question. He can do it, but tell me the, the, the detail and the scriptural reference behind the... Re okay? It's, it's fair? Yes, my age. Okay. And if you can't find it, it's okay. We won't talk about too much about it because without scriptural reference. Go ahead. There's something over here. Um, <clears throat> I guess a slight comment and then a question from that, Maharaj. Um, one of my favorite references to Hanuman comes in one of our Gaudiya literature is actually from Brihad Bhagavat Amrita. Okay. When... Um, Narada Muni is directed to Hanuman as one of the ideal servants of Krishna. Yes. And when I think Prahlad Maharaj gives this, this direction, one of the things that Narada Muni says is, I think, Brihad Bhagavatamrita 1468. 1468. Where he says that... Um, Which chapter? A fourth chapter of the first khanda. Okay, 1468, okay. Where he says that... Hanuman delighted all of the Lord's servants when he says that he, he doesn't want any type of liberation where he would forget that the Lord, that you're, he says, I have it right here. Yeah. Bhavabandha chire chasye sprahyami nimukte bhavan prabhur aham dasa iti yatra vilukte. 
Even though liberation destroys the bondage of material existence, I have no desire for any liberation in which I would forget that you are the master and I am your servant. Okay, fantastic. Similar to Prahlad. Very similar. And so, I guess, the question is that, as Hanuman is one of the immortal, like, yeah. devotees... Yeah, a set of devotees. How do we understand his serving in separation? Being, like, on the earth... Well, oh, why not? Why is service and separation a problem? It's not. Okay. He's eager for the association. That's service and separation. And that's a, that's a pava. We discussed this. Is it? And and there's a feeling of service and separation because there's been meeting. Thus, service and separation because there's been meeting. It's it's part of bhakti rasa, part of the teaching to Rupa Goswami. He'll be a great orator one day. Until then, he's just noisy. Huh? This little boy is makes noise. For now, for now, he's noisy. Maybe one day he'll be a great speaker of Srimad Bhagavatam or Ramayana or wisdom. For now, he's just noisy. How about you? I'll say one thing about you. You listen very carefully. And that's a good quality. Because when you listen very carefully, then you can remember and you can understand better if you listen very carefully. You may not understand everything, that's okay. But listen very carefully. That's a good quality. That's one of your good qualities. Keep it up. You become an elevated soul just by listening carefully from the right source, of course. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. How did I do what? How to do how oh, that's do a long story. Maybe maybe a short short uh, it's, it's hard to do it short. Um let, let me do this. The talkative one. From time to time, twice a year, we have a retreat in Gita Nagri. You know where Gita Nagri is? It's a farm community in mid-Pennsylvania. You know where Pennsylvania is? Okay. In the middle of Pennsylvania, there's a farm community called, the Prabhupada gave it the name, Gita Nagri. Gita Nagri. And we have retreats there with young people. We had one not so long ago in Houston for the college kids. And one of the sessions in groups of four, we get together and there's a session called Meet the Monk. I'm the monk. Monkey, maybe. <laughs> but Meet the Monk. So one of the questions they ask is this one. And it's recorded, and you can, you know, no, it's actually, excuse me, it's not recorded. But it's, you know, it takes about 15 minutes to go through, how did I get here? And I, I, here's a real short one. It just comes, it's, it, I, you, you get here from inquisitiveness. Three things. One, there's a high reality. I have confidence that there's a higher reality. There's something more than stuff. There's a higher reality. I know it. Two, I don't know what it is. That's important to know that you don't know. 
And the third is, I want to know. That's how I got here. And there, were, there was a series of events that very kindly helped me ask those questions. And they, you know, that's, that's the autobiography part, but the principal part is asking. I want to know. I know that I don't know. And it's important to me. And when you start asking, what's well, the negative? Supposing you don't ask, you'll never know. Supposing you ask and you don't know, keep asking. The biblical saying is, seek and you shall find. You heard that one. Atato Brahma Jigyasa, that's the Vedanta Sutra message. Just ask. Huh? No. Born in Timbuktu. I was born in upstate New York in, you know, a little place. It's a long story. But I'm just giving you the principle because you want, you know, it's, it isn't time to do the whole long story. You're just inquisitive. Supposing you're inquisitive and you don't get answers. I stopped, I was, I was, when I was young, I used to ask those questions. And I didn't get answers. I asked mom and dad. They didn't know. I asked the priest in our church. He didn't know. And I got, you know, I got too busy being successful in the ways you're supposed to be successful. You know what being successful means. You do good with your academics. You do good with sports. You do reasonably well with social. And you get, you'll get A's in your exams. You get into a good college. You get a good degree. You get a job. You get married. You get a house. And you, you know, you do, you, you're, you're successful. I was too busy being successful in all those boxes, checked all the boxes, then asking the question. And then I got a kick in the seat of the pants and I started asking the questions again. Didn't get answers, but I had lots of questions. And one thing led to the next thing. Anything else? Specific to Hanuman, preferably. Okay. Yes, you have something. Where's the microphone? Um, uh, Hanuman is a Jeep Tattva. He's a great devotee of Lord. He is serving Lord forever. Forever. Um, yeah, it might be a dumb question, but yeah, I do not know. Uh, so why did he not go to the spiritual world? Why because is he still because here? Ram told him to stay. Okay, just as a service. Yeah. You know that here's the pastime. <clears throat> Sita had entered into the earth, correct? And Ram was now ruling Ayodhya. He placed a golden murti of Sita next to him as he ruled in Ayodhya. The time had come for his pastimes to end. And so he arranged that he and all of his associates entered into the river Sarayu and went directly to the spiritual world again. But he left behind four people. Four. One of them, Hanuman. The instruction for Hanuman. For as long as the mountains are there and the rivers flow, as long as there's creation, you stay and you sing my glories. Number two, Jambavan. You stay behind. Because Jambavan was behind and stayed there for Krishna's appearance, right? Yeah. And there were two others, Dvidvida and Minda. Dvidvida and Minda, so there were four. He specifically instructed them, you remain. They, those two, Dvidvida and Minda, 
had a service to do. The service was to teach people what happens when you make offense to a Vaishnava. Bad stuff happens when you make offense. So bad stuff happened to both of them. Dvedam Mayandar back to the spiritual world now. Um, and Jampant is also back to the spiritual world? Or? Yeah, he's, yeah he's, he, he's an eternal associate of the Lord, as is Hanuman. Hanuman is still in the earthly realm. Anjambo Dweep and Kim Purusha Varsha singing the glories of Ram. Canto 5, Chapter 19. He's still there doing his thing. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay, let's end there. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah.